the Cool Beans Podcast with the coolest host around. Thank you for listening to Cool Beans Podcast. This is our disclaimer saying most of the jokes, uh, words, and anything we're saying is used for satirical or funny purposes. If you just so happen to be offended, you can find another podcast. Um, Please do not be and take everything in stride and everything with a grain of salt. Thank you for listening. Now to the show. That's right. There we go. Uh, cameras. Got, I gotta figure out the record the camera settings. All right. Well, I'm gonna stop doing this one that takes up internet. Okay. So let's see. What programs can I kill for now? Let's kill Steam. Let's look at Discord. Let's see if anyone's on Discord. Okay. So uh, my name is Rasta Tyler. Uh, I just started uh, LLC up in Oklahoma. I moved here about you know, five days. I'll be living here for nine months. So I've almost lived here an entire year. And I came here to uh, I came here to uh, start a business with my with my roommate. And we had just on the 18th of last month we started Cool Beans uh, K O O L Beans Production LLC. So uh, hey there, how you doing, Death Violets? Thanks on the transition things. I. Uh, this one's just a template. I haven't really edited it that much, so I'm gonna. I haven't had the time to because I work two jobs, work seven days a week, plus run the business. So there's a lot on my plate right now. But uh, I'm having fun. I'm actually doing what I've wanted to do since I was five years old. Picked up my first camera and played. I've been playing video games since I was old enough to hold a controller. My first PlayStation, and my grandma was a big gamer, so she had all the consoles from like. The very first thing, like my mom and uh, my auntie and a couple of my uncles would be talking about how uh, grandma had, uh, they, they basically had the first computer ever and they had to, had this big ass book like that big and they had to write code for this long to be able to play like Snake for two minutes. They, so basically you'd be coding for like three hours just to play a game for like two minutes. Now that's dedication. My mom said she never did it. She did it once and was like, I'm never doing that again. But uh, I wish I was in, I was alive at that point. I would love to play with that computer. Like, uh, I, 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 I think my uncle threw out all the stuff after he moved in with my grandpa. Or, I don't know, maybe held on to it. I'll have to, I'll have to look into it. They, I know there was a typewriter and stuff at my grandpa's house. But my grandpa basically came from either baby boomer or before baby boomer generation. He was real old uh, when, I, when I was born. But he was a great grandpa, great grandpa. I learned a lot from that man. I, he taught me how to read a newspaper. I actually started reading the newspaper again. Uh, last Sunday and the old local Oklahoma news about the school systems and stuff it really upset me because uh, basically uh, they are they want to ban 52 books uh, they, I don't know if it's in the process or if they're going to and if teacher uh, and these books aren't part of the curriculum either these are just books in the library they like basically they don't want these books in the library and I don't believe in book bannings whatsoever I just believe every book should be in the library available yes certain certain books should be shouldn't be available to certain ages unless they seek it out themselves maybe it should be in a school library but high school level if a freshman should be able to read whatever the hell they want to read because i was reading books from as early as i can remember like four years old uh i was reading books uh like i explained to one of my friends the other day uh, about this so i've been religion all my life i've been a, i was raised christian i went to i've probably been to a, like a hundred churches over over the uh my time of my life and uh Basically, uh, I, so I was raised Christian, so I know my Bible pretty well. And the reason why I call myself Rasta Tyler is it's, it's kind of a title that was given to me over just the way I acted and what I believed in. So about when I was, I want to say junior year, whatever the second year of high school is, like freshman and junior, yeah, I was really into drugs a lot and, uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, so uh, I got out of the drugs because of the religion I followed, the way of life, really, uh, Rastafari. So that's the religion, basically, that Bob Marley followed, uh, and that's what all his music's based off of. Uh, that's something I would like to work on and getting the rights to play some of his songs, like especially his older stuff on stream, or at least the beats of his music, because the reggae is, I feel it in my soul. But then, really, I feel all music in my soul, like even country, which I don't really care for, but I do watch it, I do listen to it. There's a few country artists out there that I like, like uh, Garth Brooks, maybe? I think he's country, I don't know. But uh, Bob Marley is my number one artist of all time. Like, I've been probably listening to him since birth. Him, Beastie Boys, Chance the Rapper. Like, I, the tattoos I have are of the musicians I have are the ones that really affected me. So, 
three MCs, one DJ. This was my stepdad's. Uh, so he learned how to how to um, tattoo in prison, and um, this is his style, jailhouse. So he did. This is the only jailhouse tattoo I have, because uh, I like color. Color is my thing. I got all my other tattoos are colored. In fact, the last tattoo he's able to do before he passed away is uh, this Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And uh, I'm looking for someone to color it in right now the, and get his dates on it. I think that'd be really cool. And uh, honestly, actually the Panda uh, is a collaboration for me and my stepdad and one of my friends. Uh, so, I, so this Panda right here, this was a birthday present. One of the, so I was about, it was about when I turned 20. I think this was, it was either 19 or 20 birthday. Yeah, it's 20. Yeah, 20 year old birthday. This was uh, my first, so basically he did a lot of tattoos for me, uh, free. I paid him most of the time because I, I like to service. So I paid for the tattoos. Most I ever spent was maybe 150 and I would get two tattoos at a time. Uh, so the panda bear, that's like my, my, so if you ever watch Fight Club, uh, when it says go into your cave, he sees a penguin. When I go into my cave, I see a panda, and uh, basically he made a Rasta panda because he really respects me and my religion and everything. And uh, so I found a picture online with dreads and everything. But he he basically he didn't like to draw, but for me he would draw like special shit. Like he would do he would work on it. Um, that's how I know he respected me as a person because he never gave me a real nickname because he would give everyone like nicknames that he respected. Like if he respected you, he would give you a nickname. But if he didn't respect you, he would. He would just not fuck with you, basically, because uh, that's how he grew up. He grew up in like South Florida, so he in and out jail and all that. Uh, uh, met him. Uh, my mom met him. Uh, I want to say my either my sophomore, or junior. I, I was 17 at the time, so my first tattoo was One Love. Uh, he gave that. I was gonna pay him 30 bucks, but he gave it to me free just because he liked my mom. And I guess he liked me too, because it was just probably like a month into meeting him. Basically within a week of meeting him, he moved in with us and uh, basically stayed ever since. And uh, sadly he's passed away though, so. Uh, so I, I like the tattoos because of their memory of him. Um, and he is the father of three of my uh, siblings. Um, uh, yep. They currently live in Florida. Uh, uh, hopefully I'll see them again someday. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then my next tattoo that basically, uh, so I don't want to get into the whole details, but he was out of, out of my life for maybe s a year after we met him, uh, because I'm not going to get into it right now, but anyways, so what brought it back into my, our life was, uh, I got this tattoo. So I contacted him. It's kind of faded, so I gotta get all the yellow is kind of faded because yellow really fades. So I had to. I got my mom's name. It's the only name I have on me because I don't think you should get people's names on you unless they're like directly related to you or have a very close connection. Like if I ever get married, maybe I'll get my wife's name on my knife, on my somewhere on me, but probably not. But uh, the panda tattoo, I actually had the original prints, so the original ink prints, so that's gonna be the symbol. I'm not gonna get wedding rings or anything, but I, I believe tattoos is a way of speaking. My my tattoos are my life story. They're every every tattoo I have has meaning to me in some way. Like throughout the years of my life, like the oldest tattoo is the one love. Then uh, I don't remember the, like the age of like I, I have Facebook memories and t uh, Instagram. You took my Instagram page. Can't really show this one off. I get another. But I have Goku and Vegeta on my arms. Like a set of the Gallic Gun and uh, Kamehameha Blast. It's when they're fighting Perfect Cell. So Vegeta's charging up the best attack and the best, you know what, I'm, I might play that on stream later tonight depending on what game I play because I just noticed that I bought Dragon Ball Z Fighters so I might try that on PC. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I got all the characters so if I can get a troller hooked up, I might honestly uh, give that a shot, yeah. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, so, so Goku, when he did the dirty instant Kamehameha against Cell where he's, he's like, you are gonna blow up the earth. He's just like, Nah, not really, bitch. And then he did it to Khalifa again in Supra, but he was Ultra Instinct and grinded on the goddamn beam shot. Like, that shit was crazy. Like, ah. Uh, when I saw that lot, because I saw I didn't see it live, I saw it the day after on YouTube. 
But that, I thought that was the craziest shit, because it reminded me so much of how dirty he did Cell in Cell games. Like, honestly, I ha my friends has the DVDs, I might upload them to my computer and do like a retrospective if I can figure out like the licensing and stuff. Um, but yeah, because, uh, just on the Cell Saga, honestly, because the Cell Saga is my favorite uh, saga. From, from, basically, from Future Trunks, History of Future Trunks, because that was the first VHS uh, tape I had, and I recently... Uh, found a place as a VHS player that I it's called it's a vibe OKC uh, here in the outlet mall close to where I live uh, But anyways uh, that I go there and I was able to watch revenge of cooler because I brought my revenge of cooler tape that I found years ago It's the last I, DBZ tape I was able to actually come across uh, in VHS form because I prefer VHS is for DBZ honestly because I don't know, it just brings me back to childhood, watching Tanami back in the early or late 90s and early aughts um, with my dad and then sending, recording the tapes of Passion, uh, the soap opera I used to watch. Because my mom got me really into soap operas. Basically, before I left Florida, me and her were watching General Hospital every single day uh, that it was on the air. So it was like five days a week because soap operas run for like 100, like 50. I think the old soap, soap opera is like almost 100 years old at this point. Uh, I... I couldn't tell you what it is because it's like a British one or something. And then I do, I do like old shows like uh, the sh show I'm I would love to get back into. I need to find the Blu-rays or something for the classic Who, but I'm actively in Doctor Who. I need to watch Flex. I haven't touched it yet, but I finished season one and two of Jodie Whittaker. I uh, I really enjoyed season two, but season one I did not care for as much because the writing was kind of weaker. But season two writing was a little better. But uh, I recently Black Friday I bought the entire series of um, from. Uh, Christopher Eccleston to uh, Peter Capaldi. I have the, the entire collection of the 2005 to Capaldi, uh, end of Capaldi. I have not sat down and watched them yet because they're on HBO Max, so if I'm just chilling, I'll pop up HBO Max. But I got the Blu ray for David Tennant's complete saga and then the DVDs for the rest of the guys. Um, and I also got the DVD for David Tennant's first season because uh, when I first moved to Oklahoma, I was shocked. Oh, I still do. But actively, I spent a lot of money at vintage stock. In fact, uh, I bought almost the entire series of Always Sunny because Always Sunny is one of my all-time favorite shows. I've been thinking about getting bad news tattooed right here, just like Charlie has. Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> nobody really like if you don't watch the show enough or get the inside jokes or read their books or look at their posts. He doesn't really have bad news tat tattooed on him for real. It's just something he draw that like, he has the makeup department like per like do a tattoo every time he does the show he it's the same spot every time same spell the same because charlie's illiterate i'm jumping around a lot because that's kind of how i talk but uh i'll get back to it i i talk to y'all chance and stuff but anyways back to what i was saying um i don't know what i'm saying i'm just gonna start over so always sunny i'll just talk about always sunny i'm gonna do a retrospective of always sunny once i get my blu-ray drive for my pc i need to looking investing in that i just got my capture card for my switch today so uh thursdays i will do be doing switch thursdays that's the plan for 7 to 10 or 11 depending on how i feel about playing the switch don't know what game i'm gonna play yet i'm thinking skyrim or king hearts birth i sleep because i bought the entire king hearts collection it was on sale i think the last week when i bought my switch i'm upset though because uh i work at gamestop so i get little deals and things here you know uh, I'm not sponsored by GameStop though. I, I'm just associated with them. Uh, I've been working there for about a month now. Uh, but yeah, so I bought my Switch. I traded in my Xbox One S because uh, basically my Xbox One S was just an entertainment system at this point. It wasn't doing me any good. I barely played games. So when I what I get enjoyment out of is recording and twitching, live streaming games. Like I don't get record. I don't get enjoyment out of just playing games anymore. Cause especially since I don't have the time as an adult to do it. Especially since I'm running my own business. That is. That, yeah, and when I first got up here, I was working at a company uh, that makes uh, certain burgers for certain other company, and I worked there for about seven, six or seven months before I quit because I just couldn't handle the stress. Basically, put me in a depressive episode, uh, and at the, at the end of December and uh, back the second week or first week of January or second week of January, I took basically a whole week off and came to the conclusion I need to quit, and. Um, I went up to 7-Eleven down from me, close to me, and uh, basically asked, hey, are you guys hiring? And the, and they were, that day, it, it, uh, the new manager I just came up to basically switch the shop around. Really cool guy. I still keep in contact with him. He's no longer with the store. He's uh, 
at another store now because he's a, like a owner of a store or something like that's what he was moving up to i think that's what he's training in now but anyways he's the one that hired me and basically got me the interview the next day so i called lopez and quit that day i got the job and then six days later i started working at 7-eleven was able to pay my rent that month and uh, the rest is history for that so we're gonna 7-eleven four days a week now and gamestop two, three days a week so i'm working all seven days but it's not burning me out because um uh, uh, I meditate two hours a night and f or well two hours a day and then four hours of sleep Because uh, my dad uh, he'll send me motivational quotes every now and then because I'm gonna be real candid here I have mental health issues. I'm bipolar type 1. I was diagnosed after my 20th three days after my 20th birthday uh, bipolar type 1 and they try they also thought I was schizophrenic or then they downgraded to schizoaffective then they were like okay you're not schizoaffective you just have insomnia really bad insomnia but uh, when I was down in Florida Florida is like number 49 or 48 it's really down there I haven't checked the stats lately I'm going to because I would love to get into politics later in life even I may look the way I look but this is what all politicians are gonna look like in the next 30 50 years everyone's gonna have all politicians gonna have news leaks it's basically po politics is gonna look way different in america or actually the whole world in the next 50 years because my generation i'm in is i'm part of the cusp of gen z and um millennials i'm on the tail end of millennials so i'm not quite Gen Z, but I still keep up with them because I watch TikTok and stuff, so I love TikTok. I was at TikTok at the beginning since Musical.ly, but I did not post anything. I was just a watcher. I recently started posting stuff in the past month or so um, because I want to be more active on TikTok. I want to post my Twitch highlights on TikTok and stuff, get some exposure for Cool Beans Productions LLC. Uh, so this is what I'm doing Twitch for, is to get uh, exposure for Cool Beans LLC, my production company and uh, hopefully get Twitch uh, Cool Beans Gaming underneath the... I don't know if, they, if I have to get Twitch... Uh, depending on if I make money on this, I don't I don't do, I don't want to do Twitch to make money, I just want to do Twitch for fun, to play games, and do my podcast. Because uh, I love talking, I can talk for hours. Like, I've already been talking for the last uh, 24 minutes, basically. Uh, but even though, before... I was talking the whole time, the whole day before. Like, I worked from... Five. I, I woke up at five this morning. Worked from six to two, and I I talk throughout the entire day. And um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna take a break and drink some water because water is very important. I currently have three waters next to me, uh, <laughs> uh, and that's my Vans collection. I the only one that's not a Vans is the one the orange ones at the bottom. Those are my GBZ uh, shoes I picked up from a clearance sale in Florida at i believe it's uh as i work a record player store in the mall that was local to me uh, but yeah i could i i've only had two cars in my life and i like, got my first car when i was like maybe 19 no no not even 19 22 probably was my first car and it was a great uh piece of shit uh it was an awesome car it was my first dream car I grew up with Fast and the Furious. I have all the movies. I even just recently bought the 20th anniversary 4K of Fast and the Furious 1. I cannot wait to watch that in 4K. That's going to be fucking amazing. I might run out of theater just to watch that movie in 4K in IMAX. Like, I don't know if they will scale up to IMAX. I'm pretty sure 4K is... I think IMAX is like 8K, if I'm correct. Or, or it's 4K, I don't know. Or, or it's just different. It's, but yeah, I'd be able to watch it in a theater because they have the connections. So I'm thinking of running out the MC for me and like a couple other people to watch Fast and Furious 1. Because I'm trying to get... I got my... So my roommate has never seen it. Um, and he's my best friend since the last 12 years. We went to high school together and everything. He's my, he's, uh, if you listen to the prior Cool Beans podcast before I archived it all, I will bring it back eventually if it's, if there's enough demand. We only had like maybe 452 listens out of like, I don't know, 39 uh, podcasts, but it's, it's whatever. I was doing it for solidarity and fun just to see how our friendship changed over the, like, I think we started in like 2020 or 2019, so a little bit before COVID is the first time we started. And, um, the, we started off with uh, max, toxic masculinity, and our last podcast, I believe, ended. Uh, let me see if uh, I'm gonna look at my files. I have them all archived. I'm on multiple platforms in my computer. Let's see. Let's see. Archived audio. Cool uh, podcast. So there's like. All right. So there's like. Um, oh, it's just was an easy number. I kind of did bad at naming them. I named them all because I have. I have season two, season three, and then just the then just the first ten, I believe. And I'm drawing. Let's see. 
Kopie ins Podcast. Hm, let's see. This podcast. Look at my folders right now. I have so many podcasts. Uh, we just sign oh, up. I have a couple ones that I did not release. So I may go back and edit those and release them eventually. I don't have them in Conceit order, maybe. Alright. Let's see. No, they're not in Conceit order, so that's not convenient. But I do have them all over the place. I'm going to say there's like 39. Uh, I only had like really one active listener that listened to every single one and she would tell me what she thought of them almost every time but she did say she liked it so i'm hoping this will be a continuation of that the only reason why i archived them is because uh me and my roommate uh we we, we were kind of becoming caricatures of ourselves. uh which i i feel like i was always myself within the podcast it was just uh, I like to come off as a genuine person. I feel like I come off as a genuine person at all times. But the podcast, I kind of fed it up a bit. Which is what you do in podcasts. You're supposed to play a character. And Asa, uh, if you've listened to the original podcast, uh, he is now the executive producer. He's taking a more step away role, which is what he was trying to do the whole time. Uh, basically, because yeah, our very first conversation, the very first episode of the podcast, I might play that later, but at the end of the podcast, uh, was basically him saying, I'm not your co-host. I'm just a guest. I'm a guest host. And we basically, the whole, basically the first 10 podcasts were us arguing if he's a host or a guest host or producer. But yeah. So uh, for this podcast, I am the editor, producer, uh, host, and uh, I'm going to give another title here. I'm going to call myself an executive producer. I uh, know. No, I'm the producer. Yeah, I'm just the producer. Uh, audio engineer. We can do that. I'm an audio engineer. I got to work on that. I can't wait to get a mixer. Because right now, I just have a USB studio microphone. Ellis. Ellis USB audio is what it's called. Uh, and everyone I've talked to says this microphone is fantastic. I sound great on it. Um, I just the audio earlier. Uh, it sounded good. So I'm hoping with the stream, it doesn't get all, you know, sometimes when you stream. I haven't really tested streams as much lately because i have not had the time this is the first chance i got uh the mic does sound great oh, okay thank you i uh, appreciate that uh does the music sound good too it's not too loud not too low like if it like let me know how the music sounds because that's something i've been testing i think i got it at the right audio right now or, or do you even hear music because when i recorded earlier i could hear the music but it cut out for a second so i don't know if it's still there anyways uh you can answer when you read you can um back to where i was so uh i i've been streaming on and off for about uh, mm. yeah so keep it at this level volume okay yeah i don't like it loud i, I like it as long as it's in the background this is and then if you're curious what the spotify playlist is it is uh it is twitch lo-fi no copyright dmc free so basically i'm totally free to use this music And uh, it, ha it has about 37 songs, so it goes about, about two hours and 49 minutes. Ooh. Honestly, if I wasn't on a, if I wasn't on a loop and um, shuffle, I would probably do this podcast for the next three hours or two hours and 49 minutes. But I do want to play games tonight, so I'm only gonna go for probably till 8:30. I'm thinking uh, maybe 8:15 because I gotta do some transition stuff off stream to be able to get the games working again. Because uh, again, I had I have not had the time to work on it. Basically, I I had taken it. I got home at six or 550 from my day of doing everything i do to keep the business and 7-eleven running for me so like i don't keep 7-eleven running i'm just a retail guy i get paid enough to get my rent paid that's all i need and then i got seven and then i got games to buy games and stuff that's the important part anyways so uh twitch i'm gonna actually edit this border is just a template i'm gonna actually make this rasta color because that's my colors um, and I'm gonna change everything around. Thankfully, I got the I got the logos working. Uh, I had someone make me a uh, Cool Beans podcast and uh, Cool Beans gaming logo. Um, eventually, when I put it on t-shirts, I will pay that person uh, royalty fees. So keep that in mind if you're out there listening. I think you are, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So, oh, and then back to what I was saying. So the so the logo. Yeah, I've been thinking about this for a while. It's gonna be my logo because I love pandas. They're my, they're my spirit animal. Basically, they're what I see when I walk into my cave, just like how he saw a penguin. Um, and uh, pandas, 
I've loved pandas. Uh, so my first big animal I liked uh, that wasn't a domestic animal, like a cat or something, because cats were my first love. I, I've had cats ever since I can remember. I have a cat right now. I don't know if Sasuke is around. I know Cinder, my roommate's cat, was in here earlier. Hey, Sasuke. I don't know. He'll come if he wants to. But he's like my therapy cat. I'm trying to get him licensed right now. Uh, which I'm going to talk to my therapist next week about. Okay, I see her in person for the first time. I've been seeing her for about six or seven months now, which is pretty dope. And it's the first therapist I really opened up to, honestly. And uh, she's really helping me through some stuff. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. But I, I go every Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Um, we did do it for... Yeah. And I'm, I'm getting my own insurance, finally. Uh, it's, it's actually not that expensive, either. Uh, I'm surprised about how much I was able to... To like basically gave tax uh, not tax credit but you know it's cre credited uh, in Oklahoma it actually helps because uh, I did have insurance with the Lopez uh, mm, not gonna say the name anyways so uh, I'm not I'm not even gonna say where I'm but okay never I'm gonna say more basically I had good insurance with that company and uh, but it will the insurance just wasn't worth the risk of my mental health going down the drain because even on medication my mental health can still wane because I with my bipolar type one I mostly manic. I don't get depressive as much, which I, when I'm looking back at my past, I can tell I did have depressive episodes here and there, like throughout high, middle school and high school and childhood. But uh, I didn't really think about that. I, I might bring that up in my next session. But anyways, uh, I, uh, oh, I hear a cat. I don't know if you heard that cat. I think that was Cinder. Sasuke! Anyways, I'm going to feed them after the stream. I'm going to stream till about 10 or 11 with the games, but after about, I'm gonna say 8, 15, hey Cinder, how are you doing? This is my roommate's cat. I don't know where Sasuke is, he's not coming here. But yeah, she's a Russian blue. Um, some, one of my roommate's friends found her on um, on the street, like in a gutter or something, and Ace was like, I got, Ace is the producer, the executive producer of the podcast. It, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, Speak on it. He does not listen to the podcast because he does not like the sound of his own voice. And I tell you him, just listen to it, man. You'll enjoy it. We're funny people. Like I, I basically I listened to all the entirety of the podcast uh, last month just to see, like, hey, how do I feel about this still being up? So I might bring it back uh, on a separate RSS feed, just as or or if there's enough demand for it, because I did have about I want to say 20 listeners in total. But in about 452 active, or not, I mean, about 452 listens throughout the, the entirety of, I don't know, I'm going to look at the actual stats, see what it is. Let's see. Because we're, we're on Spotify, we're basically on every podcast app, I'm pretty sure. Um, I used, um, let's see, where is it? Do I even have the app anymore? Oh, it's deleted. I think my phone deleted the app. Oh, wait. No. It doesn't matter. I, I use Anchor to post my host my podcast because they host it for free. And eventually I can add ads, but I probably would not add ads to this podcast unless I really respect the advertiser. Like if it's like Dollar Shave Club or something, I really respected them because uh, they're the earliest I've ever heard them. And I'm only going to mention this podcast because they're a bed podcast. And I they say do not... Uh, the, in the podcast, they say do not mention podcasts that... Or if you mention a podcast, then that means you know they're better than you. So basically, I've been listening to this podcast since 2008 is when I discovered it. I think they started in like early or late 07 or, or they started at the end of 08. So I either discovered in 08 or started listening to 09. So I've been at the very beginning. And this company, Rooster Teeth, fantastic company. I've been following them since 2005. I can't wait to get a Rooster Teeth tattoo. Uh, I, even they say it's dumb to get a Rooster Teeth tattoo, but hey, I've been with the company, like, not with them, but I've been a member, I've been on a, the associate website, their social media website, they were, like, one of the first websites to have, like, what Facebook's doing, like, they, like, I don't get why their website's not bigger, they were basically at the ground floor, I think pretty sure Facebook launched maybe a year or two after they start, started, so, I, I don't remember the whole Facebook years dates thing. I know they started in Harvard or what, what the fuck. I don't care. Facebook's whatever. Um, I'm curious about the metaverse stuff. I got a VR headset just because of the metaverse stuff. But, yeah, I know. Because I, I like to stay at the ground floor of technology. Because I feel like I've had technology throughout my life and I have not used it in the correct way. I should be in a better spot than I am now at the age I am. That's just my 
personal hangups on myself because of the advantage that they have with technology. Like in middle school, I ha I took uh, HTML5 classes, HTML3, I learned HTML3 as well because it's, we were on, H I think it was HTML4 we learned on and then HTML5 had just come out. So we learned both. And she, the teacher, had, she was, ugh, I did not like that teacher, but I kept going to that class anyways. So the first year, HTML, the next year, Dreamweaver, the year after that, oh no, the first year I was in intensive math, because in Florida, you have to take this thing called the FCAT, I don't know if it's still a thing, because it's been a while since I've been in school, but I think towards the end of my high school career, they were ringing out the FCAT, uh, but uh, so I, I spent fifth grade, um, that was my first year in Florida in school, fifth grade, and I had, I, I was a really sensitive kid, oh, it's not a thing, I'm good, so they, thank God, I'm glad they took it off. Because that was something I I complained to the school board. I actually went to the school board myself about the FCAP after I left school. Because uh, in my early 20s, I was kind of an activist for school. After I was diagnosed with bipolar. Basically, at the point to the point where the school I went to had to say, Hey, you're an adult now. You can't keep coming to the school unannounced. You actually have to get a visitor pass and call us ahead of time. So if you want to come, you can just... Oh shit! Yeah, I yeah. Fuck the FCAT. I I I, I think I told you uh, that I, fa I the math class uh, freshman math I did not go to almost at all. I, I'm pretty sure I missed about that class about maybe six months in total of that class because I skipped it so much, or I was on drugs at the time. So I like I failed the hell out of algebra one. But when it came to the exam. Th that year, the average score was like a 58 or 60, so everyone basically got a D or an F on that exam. I was in the top like 10% that got an 85 to a 90 on that test, and only like 1% of the students got a 100 on it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was apparently Algebra 1 test that year was really hard because they graded on like a curve or something. So they're like, oh, okay, clearly this guy understood Algebra, even though he completely failed the class. I had like a 12 in that class that's how bad i failed that class but every other class in freshman year i had like maybe i was like a a b d c so i, I had all i had basically, basically my report card was like a b c d e f i had all, I had, I had all the letters freshman year uh i was never on the honor roll because i could not keep a b going throughout my high school career because i just didn't care about some classes i like if i didn't care about the learning in the class especially if i can learn it on my own like algebra i can learn it on my own that's easy to learn algebra 2 fuck that shit i'm never doing algebra 2 again they told me i only had the three math credits so i was i was so i planned my whole thing on that just get math out of the way as fast as possible so i did like the basic math classes i could take so algebra geometry and algebra 2 those were three classes that i took oh, fuck out geometry i'm not gonna ever even use that unless i become like a builder or an architect and i don't plan on that um, and then algebra two, and I got like a C in it. It was it was yeah, I didn't care. I didn't really pay attention. I like the teacher. She was cool. She listened to some music and stuff. <clears throat> and I had a couple friends in there. Uh, we would talk the shit and everything. So, anyways, back to back to that. Uh, so algebra. So yeah. And then when I got to fresh uh, high school, uh, uh, to senior year, they're like, hey, you, you still need to take a uh, college math for college readiness, even though you're not going to college. Uh, it'll get you half a college credit. Uh. I still haven't used any of my AP or any of my college credits. I don't know if I see if they're still available to me because I'm past that age of uh, where I use transcripts. I have life experience now, so uh, if I go to college, I'll just use my goddamn life experience. <laughs> like it's better to go to college after not don't go college straight out of high school. That's dumb. Don't take out a hundred thousand dollar loan at that age. Because I wrecked my credit at 22 or 20, 21, 22 because of bipolar. So I don't know if I can call these places. I've been meaning to call these places and say, hey, I was in a manic episode. Can we do a forgiveness or a reduction or something? So I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I could probably get like a consolidation loan. I have like about 3,000 debt from my 20s. But I, I could take care of that for sure. I just, I don't know. I could buy other stuff and like the business and all that and then take care of it down the line uh because my credit is really i'm getting my credit i recently got more credit cards and credit and, and stuff i got a secure credit card a few months ago I've been doing really good with that and paying off and i'm almost back up to uh where i started with my credit score not where i got to my credit score i don't want to talk about when the numbers and stuff but i i'll just let you know i was able to get really good loans and stuff uh, 
Uh, but with Florida, I didn't have, so I had the credit, but not the job history, because in Florida, uh, I had to switch jobs like every six months because it was a summer place. I worked at a water park two years, I was grill cook one year, and the next year they promoted me to an assistant, basically an assistant manager, one of the assistant managers, because like, I was a supervisor, but they were like, you're technically assistant manager so i was like all right but i was like numbers uh, so we had numbers so there was 51 52 53 our manager was 50 that's how our that's how our microphones were listed uh so the guy that was supposed to be 53 uh he, he was cool like he, cool guy i still talk to him when i can every now and then i like shoot the shit with him uh he awesome guy really i we had very similar upbringings um we let the same music like he's the one that got me in the chance the rapper uh, but uh I, I think i might be more in the chance the rapper now than any one of my friends that uh, back in the day that introduced me to chance the rapper i don't think any of them have the entire discography of chance the rapper ch tatted on them i still gotta get the big day currently working with an artist because the album art for uh big day does not have the title so i don't know what kind of font to use because all these are the fonts he used on the titles of his mixtape. So Acid Rap, 10 Days, Coloring Book, The Social Experiment, his uh, little group there that he did. And this is, I got this tattoo because this is the year he got his three Grammys. I was following Coloring Book from its inception. I was there day one on Apple Music. I was there when he dropped the Apple Music concert. That was fire because I had Apple Music, I had the iPhone and everything. So I had all that de decked out with Apple Music. I, coloring book was there for me when I needed. I still listen to coloring book on the daily, like at least one song. Like it's in my constant playlist. Like I, I have a playlist called Cool Beans Life, and it's all the songs from basically they they affected my life from birth to now. So Beastie Boys is in there, Chance the Rapper, Bob Marley, Kendrick, J Cole, Kanye. In fact, I have the zip file for Donda Two concert. <laughs> Yeah, my, my actually my manager before uh, he left uh, the 7-Eleven, uh, he's still at 7-Eleven and, and we still talk and he's the one that sent me the file because he said he had someone that was like, oh, she got the zip and she sends me that because we were, we were, we basically, we we had, uh, we were about the, he, uh, we're a couple days apart in uh, our birth chart, or not birth chart, but birth age and stuff. Uh, he was born the same year I was and we're both the same age, so he was only born a couple days later or before, I don't remember. We were both born in December though, if that's all that matters. Anyways, so, um, basically, he, uh, he got me the fight. We started talking the shit, and uh, shooting the shit in here, here and there, like, uh, I talk a lot. That's, like, I don't know if you, you can tell, but I, I, like, I've been going constant for the last 40 minutes, basically. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and all day today, I like people are like, uh, can you just slow down a bit? Like I'm a lot for people like people that are close to me are the ones I really opened up to and when I get going I don't let them get a word in edgewise and they'll be, have to be like hey Can we take a break for like 10 minutes? I can't absorb all you're saying Because you're saying a lot. It's coherent, but you're saying a lot very fast very rapidly and You're going off on tangents and getting back to your topic, but I see how it all links. I, I see in my head how my head works. I see how it all links. So when I go off a tangent, it has to explain the story. Uh, so kind of like I, I would love to tell stories like Dave Chappelle tells stories. He's my ultimate favorite comedian. I saw him day one when the Chappelle Show came out. I grew up on the Chappelle Show. Two thousand, I want to say dropped two thousand two because it was a little bit after nine eleven or something or two thousand three. I want to say was the dates. I don't, I don't know it's the early odds because he stopped about two thousand five, two thousand six. That's when he didn't take the money. Respect him, and I know that was a very hard decision to walk away from that much money. But when you have that situation in your life where people are saying, "Oh, you're crazy. You need to take drugs." Blah 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 blah. That's basically why I was unmedicated for the first. I tried to be unmedicated for the first few years of bipolar. I refused medication. Uh, it was my family that convinced me, hey, you really need meds. We need to push this on you. But, because Ross is, we don't believe in the Babylonian Western system. We 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 got to tear down Babylon. So I, that's what I'm, that's what I'm here to do. I'm basically, uh, this will put me on the FBI. I'm not going to say that. Next. <laughs> that will put me on the CIA, FBI watch list, what I'm about to say. Honestly, I would love to get my file, see what they know. Like, if there's anything on me, because I, I, um, I don't know. I made that because they had Bob Marley on the CIA Lost Wish, uh, and I've actually read the file they had on him. 
uh, it was interesting stuff. I might I might read that on stream one day. I think that'd be a cool thing because I I don't remember anything from it, but I could download the file and pull it up. But because he because you know Bob Marley was a political he wasn't a political activist. He was just a, uh, he was just a Rasta. That's how he lived his life. But he was the king of reggae. All his all his uh, sons and daughters they are princesses and princes. They are kings now. That basically. Bob Marley was the king of reggae and the prophet of the ultimate prophet of Rasta. But he was the one that spread Rasta to the world. He's the one that got it out of Jamaica. If it was no Bob Marley, I don't think there'd be Rasta today. Yes, there'd be the cult of Rasta back because it started back in the 30, 20s and 30s because of Marcus Garvey saying, "Look to the look to Africa for the king." And basically, after I think it was seven years or 17 years after he said that, I don't remember the exact dates. I know it was like a few years after he said that. Haile Selassie, Emperor of Ethiopia the first, was crowned Emperor, King of Kings of Ethiopia. And they called him the Conqueror of the Lion of Judah. I actually have the Lion of Judah on my back. It says Jaw coming out the mouth. That is the shortening of Jehovah that the Rosses use for... Uh, uh, I can't know if you really see that. I was supposed to get a bead on it every year, uh, but uh, my, like I said, my, because um, he kept saying like, hey, we gotta get back and get more beads on it. Because I used to have dreadlocks. Uh, they were fortunately removed from me while I was in the psych ward the first time, and they're like, you look professional. I had 20 of jobs with dreadlocks. So I don't know what the fuck they were talking about. So they drugged me up and basically made me agree. I I, I want to sue this hospital. I don't know if I have a case, but I think I do because I'm pretty sure there's video evidence. Uh, but I, I don't know. I didn't sign anything saying they could cut my hair, so I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah, maybe verbal agreement, but I was drugged up. Like, this was when I... Because the first two weeks in the hospital, I refused drugs because of my heavy belief in Rasta. They eventually just started injecting me with Gidon, forcing me to take drugs because they, they can do that to you in Florida. It's called Baker Act. They can Baker Act you. You basically, if two of your family members say, hey, I think this person needs Baker Act, or the cops can do it too. That's basically, that's what cops do to the minorities and quote unquote mental crazy people in Florida. Because Florida is a fucked up place for mental health. So they just Baker Act you and they say they're helping you, but they're really not. Well, it wasn't until I went to like private ones where I felt helped. And But the one I went to in Fort Wall, I went to Fort, I'm going to, I'm going to name drop them actually because this, I, I I don't know if I get litigation for this, but Fort Wall Beach Medical Center, that's the first place I ever went to out of psych ward. And I spent about, from my 23rd birthday, three days later, I was put in the psych ward. Because uh, that's when the bipolar really triggered. That was my first real manic episode that was dangerous. Because I had a falling out with my mom at the time. She was supposed to be, I'm not going to get into that right now. Anyways, I'll get into that with my therapist. Um, if you guys are curious, I will go into it later. But I just don't feel like opening that much right now anyways so that was my first manic episode true manic episode where it, we realized it's a problem i probably have some mental illness so they started off yeah uh, so i went so the reason why i got put in the mental health hospital because because of what happened after my birthday uh basically i quit my job because i had a mental breakdown in my job i was crying and we everyone in the rush i was like i gotta go home guys i can't i can't do this and then i went and saw uh, confidant uh, that was close to Zaxby's uh, where I worked and I was, I'm name dropping all these places and I guess it doesn't matter it's not like Zaxby's is gonna get on me I love Zaxby's too by the way I loved working there and <laughs> they said I couldn't have tattoos so I would have to cover row up eventually I was I just got to the point where I got cocky and I was like I'm not wearing anything to cover these fucking bitches up I'm in the goddamn I'm in the goddamn uh like uh kitchen I'm not outside I'm not fa front facing and I'm, I'm glad that tattoos are becoming less and less of discriminated against because everyone's got tattoos now. Like, if you don't have a tattoo, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, I know in the Bible it says, do not make cuts above your skin. But the tattoo is my way of telling my life story. Like, every tattoo on me is, means something. That Like, I'll explain them, them all, too. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah, you have a tattoo at Chick-fil-A? Oh, that's dope. Did they, did they make you cover it up? I know they're like a Christian thing and they don't like... It's actually just the same way there. Apparently they're... Like at least that is actually on there. I don't know, know if you remember that one. That's the one we used to go to all the time. Uh, the first time I'm talking to a chat, actually, no. But yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. So I went to the confidant and that person basically told me... 
Yeah, you have to forgive your mother, not for her, but for yourself. So I've been working on that for a long time. I recently cut my mother off, again, for good probably this time, because she's a very toxic person in my life. I learned a lot of things about her from other family members. And I'm sure she's telling things about two other family members about me that aren't true. Anyways, because my sister basically told me th some things after my grandfather's death that, that she learned from the family when she went up there for the funeral. I missed the funeral by a day. Nobody has to change my earrings. Oh, I can actually dye my beard. I'm doing that this, uh, I, I, I'm gonna, so what, do you, do you really just got that cock, did they fire you or did you have to wear a wig? Cause I had a friend in, um, high school who had pink hair and she worked at, uh, Waterburger. You can't have colored hair at Waterburger. And basically she just wore a wig. I remember one time I was hanging out with her and this guy from her work and uh, she basically took her wig off. She's like, you have pink hair? Or he's like, are you wearing a wig? And she's like, no, this is my natural hair color. Oh, not natural, but this is my hair color. He's like. I th you were just blonde a few hours ago, and he's like, and she's like, that's a wig, and he's like, I thought that shit was real. She got really good wigs, but yeah, that was a that was a good night. That was the first night I got fucked up on Bacardi 151. That was my first hard liquor. That shit was crazy. Uh, my first beer ever. I was either five or six. It was when I lived in Mississippi. Or maybe I was seven. No, no, I'm gonna say six. Uh, and it's weird that I don't like beer now. Because it was like Bud Light. That's what my so my uncle, functioning alcoholic. He I seen him down a forty eight pack. So all the managers got uh, no. So all the managers got on to me. So I just put like a beanie hat on and there you go beanie. Then the owner came in and asked to see my hair and was cool. Ah, there you go. See that's that that's what yep. Yeah, there you go. You see, I was kind of the same with the owner too. Uh, Zaxby's. It was more of his son because his son was the manager and the owner was he's. He's kind of strict, again, but he had all his pie and a lot of fingers down there. And for one, I don't know if, I don't know if you ever met the owner. I'm pretty sure I introduced you once, or I met you someone there. Uh, but yeah, that guy, he, he had his finger in a lot of the pies. Uh, I would have loved to start a business in Florida, but I was just not in a place to. And Oklahoma's a great place to start a business. I might start a coffee shop next year. I already picked out a location and an apartment that's above that to live in at the end of August. That's when, um, so if I make enough money from... Uh, I make enough capital that I can start the coffee shop and yeah so basically I want to work exclusively with the Marley's because I love Marley coffee the first I basically as soon as that came out it was probably the first time I tried it when it was in the cold brews and uh, the cheese which I still have I'm gonna bring this out because this is a, a collector's item to me um, and I had every flavor at one point and the glass for every flavor Marley mellow mood so when this first came out, my parents thought this had weed in it or something. I think it had CBD or hemp before it was legal to put that shit in there. Cause this was like early, this is when I, like early days, like 2012 and shit. This is around the time when marijuana started getting legalized in places. Cause you know, I think at that time California had, had like medical marijuana, quote unquote, for like eight years at that point. Or I don't know. I, I, the history of marijuana in this country is ridiculous. Especially since a lot of the founding fathers grew and smoked marijuana. Cause if in George Washington's personal diaries, uh, I don't, I'll find it and post a picture, a link on Instagram, Snapchat, something. But basically, he wrote that said, I separate the male from the female. So, because one is good for building, and one is good for medicinal purposes. So, our founding father, George Washington, was a pothead. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, Benjamin Franklin invented one of the first bongs. That's a true story. You can read it in his, uh, his memoirs of, uh, I forgot what the book's called, but it's basically how he just banged a bunch of chicks. <laughs> and he's like, basically I went to France, banged a bunch of chicks, went to America, banged a bunch of chicks, went to England, banged a bunch of chicks. <laughs> that guy was a player. And I have a friend, uh, 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 his name's Nick, uh, I worked with at the other job. Uh, we still keep in contact, he's a cool dude, really cool dude, he's, he's older than me. He's lived a life for sure, like he's got some interesting stories. I'd love to get him on here if he's willing to tell his story um on here uh but anyways like that guy <laughs> we basically he was someone i could shoot the shit with about ethiopia he actually informed me something about holly Selassie that i did not know after his death and uh it's basically the coup d'etat and everything they killed every single student every single child because uh, uh, holly Selassie was a really good emperor 
he he gave Ethiopia free school, like public school and everything. So all these kids were learning things they never learned before. The whole entirety, they were in Ethiopia, and they so the apartheid, whatever. I, I have to look it up because. It's, I was, that was the one thing I had a hard time with when I first joined the faith, or the way of life of Rastafari, was uh, believing that Holly Selassie was basically the coming of God and the Trinity, instead of Jesus being that. Because uh, I was saved at a very early age, and I take that back, I don't think I was actually saved, because there's no way someone before the age, I'm going to say 18, because that's when you're an adult, before the age of 18 can understand what religion, unless you really study it the way I did. But even at that time, when I look back, I was like, I was not ready to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. There's no way any, anyone that age is ready to accept that big of a responsibility. Because accepting, according to the Bible, I read the Bible just about every day. According to the Bible, that is the biggest commitment you can make to something in your life. Is accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. It changes your life. That's why they call it born again. Because it literally, you are literally being born in the bath of Christ. Uh, I'm not going to talk about religion right now as much as it's a very big part of me So I'm going to talk about it in the podcast. I that's the one thing I really wanted to go into but my roommate uh, my, my, my Co-founder and best friend of all life like we were Basically, we could be life partners if we were gay. We're just not gay uh, He tells me he says he's bisexual, but uh, Yeah we talk about banging each other all the time. We, we ever since we met each other, we talk about banging each other. Like if your friend, if your family and friends don't think that uh, you and your best friend are gay, then then you're not best friends. You ain't best friends. Like we we sit together at lunch with our group and we would talk about who's the top and the bottom. I'm a switch, by the way. Uh, and, but basically, every, most of the people in the group were like, "Hey, definitely, definitely, you're the top." And I'm like, you, you read. We've come, he's definitely a top now, for sure. He's very dominant. He doesn't like being a bot. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, actually, I'm not gonna get into his sex life. I'll get into my sex life. I love it. It's interesting. And uh, if I'm being honest, I have not had sex since the beginning of COVID. 2019 was the last time I was in an intimate relationship with any woman. So, if anyone's. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not looking right now. You basically gotta live my business life it's i really probably don't have room for a relationship right now unless the person is there to build together um because I, I i don't want just a fuck buddy and everything because i it'd be nice to do that but i don't need that like sex is not the last thing on my mind but it's also not the first thing on my mind the first thing on my mind every morning is my business i every day every minute every day of the day, I'm thinking about the bit, how I can do the business, how I can improve the business, what can I do to promote the business, how can I save the business, how can I make money for the business. That's my life right now. This is what this Twitch gaming is for, to promote the business. And to play video games. So I'm playing, I, I've talked to both my managers, 7-Eleven and GameStop. I'm working four days at 7-Eleven, three days at GameStop, 16 hours there, 13 hours, 32 hours, so about mm, 48 hours a week, so that's... That's, I was working 120 hours a week at my peak. And I think, actually, I, I have to go back and look at my pay stubs. But I, so Big Kahunas, I worked an entire month once, every single day. That was some fat ass checks, I'll tell you. Because I, uh, it wasn't making great money. I was making like nine, nine fifty an hour, which was kind of fucked up, especially for what I was doing. But I hope they pay more. I'm going to name drop them. Big, Big Hoon's Water Park, great water park, loved working there, awesome manager, uh, great uh, owner, uh, great co-workers, I only had trouble with a couple, the, you get to meet all these foreigners, like that, I really, I, I can't speak another language, but I can understand basically every language out there, like, if someone's speaking a language, I can communicate with them in some way, because I have a little bit of knowledge from, like, from Slovakia, Asians, cultures, Japanese. I actually work with a girl who's, uh, I believe she says she's half Japanese or half Philippine or something. And she lived in Japan and for a little bit and speaks Japanese. Hello? All right, I thought I heard the door. But yeah, uh, so half Japanese and something like that. She speaks Japanese. I, so I, I, I kind of asked, hey, you mind if I pay you to teach me some Japanese? So I might, if Babel has Japanese, I might pay for Babel to teach me about Japanese because I would love to go to Japan and learn how to speak Japanese. I think that'd be dope. 
I would like to learn Japanese before I come here because I was stupid enough in high school not to take French or Spanish or Latin. I should have took Latin because I love the Latin roots, even though it's a dead language, no one really knows to speak the tongue anymore. But I watch foreign movies. I love anime. I watch anime dubbed and subbed and whatever. I actually watched a Mexican version of or the Spanish version of Yu-Gi-Oh once, just like a, the first season. I, I loved it because they, they, they had the most beautiful language for Yu-Gi. There's this great video of uh, the opening song for Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, where they do all the versions from each country. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> yeah, I'll link that video in my Twitch bio probably because I really like that one. Um, Anyways, so back to what I was saying. Uh, I would love to learn language. I want to learn every language I can. Like, I would love to learn how to speak Arabic so I can read the Quran in its correct version. Because that's, according to Muslims, that's the only right way to read the Quran. That's the original translation of it. To learn about Muhammad and everything. And uh, I know about the Muslims. I actually recently met a Muslim who was uh, interested in talking to me about faith and stuff. and Because I love talking about faith. And Kevin Gates, one of the Muslims that I follow... Uh, I did not know he's Muslim until I started watching Shikar, his cigar talks. He's definitely in the Muslim faith. The, like, he believes it and stuff. Just doesn't live the lifestyle fully. Just like as I don't live Rasta fully. I live a Cool Beans version of Rasta. That's my subsect of Rasta. And I would love to write a book on Cool Beans Rasta. K-O-O-L Rasta. And, uh, yeah. Mmm. One water down. I'm gonna move on to the next water. Always keep your water sandy. In the coming weeks, I should have a Dr. Pepper tumbler coming to me. Because, uh... <laughs> I love me some Dr. Pepper. Basically, that was my drink. First uh, soda soft drink that I ever fell in love with. And then my second drink I ever fell in love with Sunny D. I, uh... I I see her like banging or something. I think my neighbor's up. I Maybe mean, I'm being too loud. Uh, I'm gonna end this in five minutes because I've been going for an hour and three recording for that long. So uh, just to make, because uh, I gotta get more hard drives. But I will be back on and probably once I figure out another 15 minutes. I'll stop at 8.15 and be back on at 8.30 to play. I'm, I'm thinking uh, Halo Infinite. I'm gonna try the multiplayer. Uh, not the, the uh, campaign. I'm gonna, I started on Legendary. I'm gonna bump it down to normal and start over because, uh, you can't change mid difficulty or something. I, or maybe you can't. I just don't know how to. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to play Halo Infinite. And once I, on PC, I don't have my Xbox controllers anymore. So I'm going to have to play with the keyboard and mouse, which I kind of suck at. I'm getting better, but um, honestly, it's there. But yeah, so Thursday, I'm going to do Switch Thursdays. I'm going to either play Kingdom Hearts Collection or Skyrim that Thursday. Depends on how I feel. Because I love Skyrim. That's my favorite game of all time in the last 10 years. Favorite game of all time? Morrowinds. Elder Scrolls 3. Came out in 2003. Played in 2005 for the first time. And I play it at least once a year. So I, I will play Morrowind at some point on stream after podcast. But not tonight because I have to do some... I don't know if I want to play vanilla Morrowind or if I want to uh, re-edit my mod list for it because I haven't touched Morrowind since last year. So I just, my yearly play is coming up soon. Now, uh, if you are interested, I do have the YouTube channel. I don't know if I have a link. So I have to fix it, uh, but I can link it again later. Uh, it's Cool Beans Gaming, just like this one, spelled the same way. Uh, I believe I've got the panda logo on there um, with Cool Beans Gaming attachment and. Um, uh, so, I will do a role play of Morrowind eventually because I actually got a review done by a Morrowind role player. He reviewed my channel and said, "Hey, I don't know how this guy does not have more subscribers. He's been consistent. I have over 140 videos on my YouTube channel, gaming YouTube channel, and uh, every time I do it, I do it for about four to six months, and I'm consistent throughout the entire time, posting either every day or have a skit set schedule that I upload at every time because I record about." Uh, I do about a three hour block of recording a day when I was doing full on gaming uh, YouTube stuff. Uh, I would do like a three hour recording session and then the next day edit it. Like, I would do a three hour recording session one day and then edit about one or two videos that day. Take that three hours and turn it into about three videos or maybe four if I was lucky. Depending on, because I usually, I think my longest video is maybe two hours. My shortest video is maybe 15 minutes. Because I did emulators Friday. I stopped that because I was just wasn't picking up traction. And I guess it did not fit to what I was, my genre of, of role play. But I, I thought it fit because it was just something I was interested in. Because I have a PS2 emulator. I have a PS2. <laughs> 
and I have the games. Actually, let me show you if I can find them, because I'm pretty sure they're in my closet here. I actually have PS2 games still, which is fucking amazing. And I still have my original copy of uh, Fallout New Vegas. I always have my original copy. It's my Game of the Year edition copy that I got a few years back when I, before I stopped shopping at GameStop. I think it was the last time I went to GameStop actually in Florida. So, I have three Xbox games still. Um, Halo 2, the original steel case. It's a little rusted, so um, I, that's something I'm never gonna sell because it's just it's nostalgia. It comes with the original DVD and everything. So this shoe box right here, this is my first, this is my work Crocs that I worked at Zaxby's with. So this is my PS2 case. So, I'm definitely buying these games again because there's, some of these have new versions like for Switch and stuff. I know this one just came out with a definitive, with the three games. I, I think San Andreas, uh, Liberty City, I don't remember. But yeah, so I got San Andreas, Vice City, the best Need for Speed game, Underground 2, Gran Turismo fucking 3, and Need for Speed Undercover. All classics. And if you saw, Grace Hits. Okay, so that was the only Grace Hits one. So I got this a little later. I But all these ones. I've got as they came. I got the I so there was a local cool like boutique game shop, uh, I ga game store that would fix disc and everything and do whole tournaments. And that's where I did my first Smash Brothers tournament. Did my first Halo tournament there. Uh, I didn't make very far. I'm not very good at games. I've been playing games all my life. Never been good at them. That's why I like doing role play because you don't have to be good at the game. You can just make a story. <laughs> I'm a better storyteller than a game player. But uh, I did do some. Online Halo 3 tournaments, uh, we placed about maybe third a couple times in my online bracket, but those were easy, because uh, I, I I had the time to play games. I would, I still to this day take time off to, to uh, for midnight releases or day releases to play games. I did not pick up Elden Ring on the day it came out, but I will buy it next Friday to play on Steam. I'm going to be doing a workout death stream basically, so every time I die, I will be doing a workout. I just have to figure out how to set up the wireless webcam camera with my phone and attach it to Streamlabs. Or I might just switch over because I was get, I'm getting some stream advice from, from some people. So if I can figure out how to get the camera over here to shoot my that right there and get the lighting correctly, I'm going to be doing pull-ups, sit-ups, push-ups, and maybe crunches. I haven't decided, but definitely pull-ups, sit-ups, and push-ups. Uh, Physical fitness is a very big part. Men not, so on my on my main Instagram, Cool Beans Tyler, um, the thing is, mental fitness and physical health is a very big ping part of Cool Beans lifestyle. Because in Rasta, physical lifestyle is a very big thing. Because in Rasta, your body is a temple. What you put in your body is what you're putting into God's body. Because if you read the Bible and have you if you read the Kabbalion, an ancient Egyptian text that they sacred text, a really good book. So. If you never heard of it, and you heard of it now, that means you were meant to hear it. Because the Kabbalion, my, when my roommate pulled it out, he's like, oh, you wouldn't be interested. Um, he basically told me, he's like, you have to discover this on your own. Which is funny, because I got the paperback book of uh, this book that I just bought again. I got it from a thrift bookstore. The Cavernagasta. This came to me. Uh, I'm going to be religious here. Ja showed this to me. So, when I had my 2017 Lancer, uh, that was the last year they made the Lancer, I bought that brand new. Uh, I've only had it for, I only had it for maybe six months before I got in trouble with the mental health and the law and stuff. I'm going to go into that right now. Uh, but, I found that book with my friend my, that I'm living with now uh, at a local bookstore in, I want to say Pensacola. Um, basically, I thought the bookstore had just opened, but, because it was a mess, like, he just had books everywhere, but no, he'd been open for like a year, he said. He just hadn't had time to organize. It was so that's the kind of bookstores I like. Those are dope bookstores. That's when you know you're gonna find the really good books. And he had some sacred text and stuff. Like he had sh like good shit. And I was basically explaining to him like I found a Bob Marley thing that I still have. I'm missing the disc from it because when I get manic episodes, I kind of I watched Fight Club after the year it came out. I was very young. That's why I have the soap bar on me because. It impacts my life a lot. It's my favorite book, favorite movie, and top 10 graphic novels are the uh, Fight Club 1, or 2 and 3. I haven't picked those up yet. I do want to pick them up. 
Uh, and I don't think Polnick ever released any hardback colors in any of his book. I have, I've almost had his entire collection of books. He's a really good right author. He writes grotesque. But anyways, back to the Cape Nagasa. Pretty sure Job had me go because it was the day I was trying to get my medical card for the first time in Florida because they had just opened up the medical thing. So I had to go all the way out to Pensacola to get an appointment, and they're like, "Ah, oh, you gotta pay this, blah, blah blah." So I made the appointment for the following week. The following week, I was arrested, so I never got the chance to do do medical stuff. And that's why I was on pills in Florida because they would not recommend medical marijuana for me because they said it would mess with one of my medications. Which would actually, when I got up to OKC and got all my healthcare shit covered, they're like, "They said what?" Let me look at your file. That like, marijuana dependency? That didn't exist. Can't be dependent on marijuana physically. You can be mentally, which I'm not, because if you listen to my story, I started smoking when I was 13, and so I've been smoking since then. But in those years from 13 to now, I probably had not smoked for six years. Like, because uh, when I was living with my dad, he, he was against marijuana. He's kind of getting into it now, but uh, he's accepting it now. Uh, but uh, no, like marijuana, because he was raised in the, that Reagan era where Nancy Reagan was like, ah, oh, we're on drugs, the marijuana's bad, and they have those crazy psych videos. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. Yeah, so the Kevin Nagasa came to me. So every time a book would fall in my lap, I knew Ja was speaking to me. That's how Ja speaks to me. When I when I medicate, um, when, I sm when I smoke the ganja, smoke with the herb, as it says in Revelations, and Solomon, when he died, Plant, the plant of knowledge basically grew over his grave according to the Rastas. Because Rasta in the Bible technically is all folktale. Like, it's true to a point. A lot of the books in the Bible are parables for other things. Like, yes, Solomon wrote Solomon. Solomon was a real guy. There's evidence of Solomon. So, you can't say he didn't exist. He ruled over Jerusalem and there's, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying. If you know the stories. Solomon and uh, I've always been told I have the wisdom of I have a Solomonic wisdom So Solomon's always been a big part of my life like when I was younger I in church I I hated and certain churches I went to because with my aunt and uncle They kind of forced us to go to church To get things from them because they had the money in the family So if we want to do things like me and my older sister if we want to do things like horseback riding We would have to at least go to church and dress up in suits and shit I hate dressing up. When I go to church, I want to wear what I'm wearing daily. I'm not dressing up for church. There's, like, unless it's, like, a high... Unless I'm feeling myself and I want to wear a suit to church, which I will, I've done before, I'm not going to church. I'll dress to, I'll go to church dressed like this. That's the churches I like. Like, that was one of my favorite churches down in Florida. One of the first churches that my parents really stayed at in Florida it was, uh, they basically, this, these churches, they just started talking. He just started doing sermons out in a parking lot. And when we started going, they had rented, um, at the time it was called The Rave. It's now the AMC. It was a local theater in Destin, uh, Florida. But uh, I can't remember what the church is called. I think you went to the, if you're still watching, you went to that church. Do you remember what it's called? And if it's still around. But it basically, they, they started off uh, on an Apple box shouting at people in a hotel parking lot then they were able to get through uh donations and stuff they were able to get uh rent a space every sunday at the rave before it became the amc um and they stream online too so i might look in see if they're still around and uh try to watch that next sunday because i am going to a zoom church now with my auntie tiff uh yeah destin church was a shoreline is that what it's called the they have they have the place in they have the old bar right now like the one that the club club uh, night night town I think it was called and uh, that no longer is I think that's where they're located now is that what's called shoreline I, I don't know but yeah it's a really hip church that you are they basically come as you are is how they take you um, the first time we went the pastor was literally in flip flops he's like oh I just got home I just I just got out of the beach he was in his swim trunks and flip flops he was a little wet too so he clearly just went swimming that morning and God's coffee came to church what I loved about that church is the free donuts and the coffee because uh, I've been I'm a coffee connoisseur and uh yeah yeah sure okay yep that was the first church I went to in Florida uh and that's the church we stuck with the longest time and I I went back every couple of years because I really enjoyed it I did go with I think I went with you a couple times and that friend you had, uh, 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 uh yeah. I'm gonna personal with this person right now because I actually know this person. This is Def Eilis in the chat. Um, uh, anyway, so back to what I was saying. Uh, 
uh, what time is it? Oh, it's, oh, it's 8.23. Okay, I'm just gonna go to 8.30. I'm gonna end it at 8.30 for sure. And then be back maybe 15 minutes. Because I, like I say, I gotta figure out how, if you gotta, because this takes a while for my computer to launch games right now. That's why I gotta get a new computer. But I got an Omen 880, and I got a 1060 in there, and a Ryzen 5 14, so 26, I don't know. I have to look at the stats. But I, I'm gonna get a Ryzen 7 soon to put in this. I just gotta figure or so, someone that can put it in for me, because I don't know how to build computers yet, but I'd love to learn. That's why I got the HP Omen, so I could customize it. And I got the, my friend, he's the one that sold me the 20, the 1060. It was very hard to come by, because there's like still five, three, you could went through. $200 $500. I was not dropping that much on a graphics card at the time. I will drop it now. I will drop the money for graphics cards and stuff. I'm actually, I'm not going to say, it. I'm not going to spoil it. But uh, I'm looking at a new PC right now. Uh, I might build my third PC. I'm going to buy a pre built next time. And then I'm going to basically buy, I build my next PC by myself. I might uh, go to a shop and be like, hey, how can you build this? Because I think they they pay it. They'll pay it. if I pay them. They'll teach me how to build a PC. So once I do that, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start building PCs for my friends and stuff just for fun. Uh, but I basically found a good, really good PC for a good price with a certain graphics card that I want, and it's at a certain place that I'm not gonna mention because you don't need to know. But I'd say it will improve my streaming and my gaming. So I might be able to do uh, quote unquote 4K gaming, but I don't want to get a 4K monitor just yet because that's a little bit on my price range because I think they're still ranging from $2,000 to $5,000 or something last time I checked. I'm pricing things out right now for the business. So I actually, um, if I get money through the business, I might buy a 4K monitor for streaming just so I can do 4K gaming and watch that 4K Blu-ray because I get a 4K player from a PC and watch 4K Blu-rays. That'd be amazing. So we got five minutes before I end. Um, I'm going to wrap up here. So I hope you enjoy. I hope I didn't ramble too much, uh, but this is just the introduction, uh, basically, episode. Uh, there'll be more focus eventually. Asa will be back on a couple times. Uh, right now he's working a double or something, I think he said. He might come in at the end of the night. I don't know if he's going to get home in time, but uh, we will be playing... Mass Effect again. I think we might be doing that after streams if you can make time for it. Because uh, I know I had a one friend and a couple of viewers that really enjoyed our Mass Effect streams. Even though towards the end we were kind of low energy. But I'm going to try to keep a hype even though he's the low energy one. But I'm going to try to talk th throughout it about my day and to you guys uh, who are chats in the group. Because I would love to get the community going. Because uh, if you're interested, I'll link my Cool Beans uh, Discord and in the thing once i figure out all, all the links and stuff i'm making a link tree for the business right now i got my i got the link tree for my personal stuff but not for my uh business yet so i just have not had the time to work on it. i may be thinking about the business constantly every day and every minute every second of the day throughout when i'm asleep and i dream about the business i meditate about the business i ask questions about the business i focus on the business i talk to everyone about the everyone i meet i mention oh i have a business this is how I introduce myself now. I'm a business owner now, which is a very big part of who I am. I, I, I've always been a hustler, entrepreneur. Uh, ah. I think next stream is going to be a book stream. Because me and my roommate have an extensive library. He has a bigger library than me and way more books than I do. Because he, he buys books at least three or four a week. Because he has a... He has a um, Amazon Prime with the Audible and uh, the Amazon Books or whatever. So he, I think he told me his total books on Amazon right now is over 350, and it's still growing. And that motherfucker can read. When I first got up here, uh, I read about two books a week for the first five months I was up here. But then the job I was at just got too hectic. Now I'm reading books again, thankfully, because books are a very big part of my life, and I'm like. Write my own book and start my own publishing company. Cool Beans Publishing. That's what it's going to be called. So if you need your book published and no one's going to publish you, I will publish you for little to nothing. Because if it's interesting, I think it should be shared. Because uh, I think every book is a continuation of the Bible. Yeah, because the mo best selling book in the world is the Bible. It just, it's, just is. I, I, you can't deny it. It's been it's the book that's been translated the most times throughout history. There's no book that's been translated in more languages than the Bible. I'm pretty sure it's in every single language you can imagine, except maybe some indigenous peoples that you just... They'll kill you if you come to their island. They'll kill and eat you. There's no way to see these people. They will kill and eat you. There's no way to communicate with them because they will kill and eat you. 
There's no if and or but about it. You get on this island, you touch your foot on this island, they will know, and they will murder you and eat you. And they will have no qualms about it. They probably worship some sort of sun god. Or they might worship the god we, uh, that the Muslims, Jews, Jews, and Christians, and Catholics, and Rashas believe in. Because we all believe in the same god. Because we all take it from the same text. I don't care what the Muslims, Jews, or Christians have to say about it, or the Catholics have to say about it. Rastafari follows all the gods that they got. Him. Jaw. I and I. That's what it is. So I'm going to end that here. Because, uh... I don't want to get too far into it. So I'm going to look at the games I want to play tonight, see what I can get working, and I will see you guys in about 15 minutes if you want to stay, stick around. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Cool Beans Podcast. You're joined by our host, Ross Tyler. Our executive producer is Elegance. And if you like the podcast, please like us on Spotify or wherever podcast app you use and leave a review. Thank you very much. Have a Cool Beans day.